So obesity, you can think of as uh, a vehicle that will promote inflammation. And the obesity can induce changes in your metabolism and your gene expression and produce large amounts of pro-inflammatory mediators, which establish a positive feedback loop that amplifies, like a snowball rolling downhill, inflammation and insulin resistance. It's a monster. Uh, once it gets going, it's very, very scary. And some of you, I'm sure, feel like the game is not fair, that you walk by and inhale near the food and gain weight, and there's some other guy out there eating his head off, and he doesn't gain any weight. Well, I'm here to tell you life is totally unfair, so don't look for fair. We're just going to try to figure out how it works, okay? <laughs> All right. Also, if that wasn't bad enough, um, your brain in the obese people looks 16 years older than uh, counterparts who have healthy weight. So being overweight will elevate insulin, uh, insulin resistance, and insulin resistance will translate to inflammation. Okay, overweight is also linked to this unending cycle, immune stress, inflammation, excess body fat, and on and on in that unending cycle. It also is linked to cancer. In fact, those with a body mass index of at least 40 increase the risk of death from cancer by 52 to 62 percent. So you're at risk, multiple risk, from your weight. Okay. There have been studies that show um, the relationship to inflammation and, of course, the inflammatory markers. And the first nutrient that I want to point out, now remember, I started my talk by saying there's two things, the entry fee. One, you learn how to get the minerals in your body correct using a roll of pH paper. Two, you've got digestion. Now we're going to talk about magnesium and using extra magnesium. This is a, a really amazing piece of work that's been done, and it shows that magnesium supplementation, <laughs> this was in a 165-pound person, so if you're 250 or 60 pounds, you would need to use 900 to 1,000 milligrams of magnesium to get this same effect, okay? But um, what they saw was in four weeks, this is not a long time, uh, there was a significant reduction in overall inflammation with 60 genes being favorably regulated to reduce weight. Wow, one little player. Okay, so the first question you should ask me is when do you take it? Thank you for asking that. Uh, the, the answer is that you should take it near bedtime, but not so close to bedtime that drinking the water is going to make you urinate and put you in trouble. So magnesium is a really tricky mineral. And if you have good, healthy adrenaline, everything works fine. If you're not sleeping at night, you're highly stressed, now the magnesium can quickly be excreted. And in fact, in 1986, we learned that magnesium was held in the blood by adrenaline. So if we had adrenal exhaustion, we're going to take the magnesium in and just urinate it straight out. So we can't hold it. It's very important to be able to hold the magnesium. So obviously, we're going to have to spend some time on the adrenals. I can't do that today, but I want to show you how important it is. And typically, if magnesium is low, you're going to, um, uh, it could be from poor diet, as you'll see, especially with overweight children, poor uptake, but also the result of a severe trauma or uh, surgery. Okay, now, low magnesium is linked, again, to insulin resistance, one of the things we're worried about. Impaired glucose tolerance, uh, higher blood pressure, increased inflammation, in, and uh, oxidative stress, and um, more um, risk from uh, lipid oxidation. So what we see is children right out of the box being overweight. Many of these children are magnesium deficient. In fact, one-third 
of school-aged children do not meet the average magnesium requirement from their diet. <laughs> wow. So what have we done? We've set the stage for the child before he can even take care of himself to be overweight. Okay, what form uh, would be the most magnesium out there is usually citrate. Citrate is very poorly absorbed and it's, uh, it's pretty good at giving you loose stool. So if you try to get a high dose, <laughs> it may backfire and uh, you got problems you didn't want with very loose stool. So the form that we prefer is magnesium glycinate. And uh, actually, you should be careful if you're going to use this. Typically, you should use it for a few months to give yourself a, a chance to really replete and make sure you get the adrenals working really good. And they would need B6, B2, PABA, panathenic acid, vitamin C, tyrosine. They're going to need water and salt, all those things and five hours of sleep. Now, if you've done all that, now you're in a position to really hold on to magnesium. That's going to be great. Okay, so back to the fat pattern. It induces immune stress, inflammation, over, overweight, and that feeds on it uh, till it leads to disease, dis-ease. Okay, so if the cycle continues long enough, you have cancer. So let's break this pattern.